Welcome to the 2012 Wayne State University Football Preview. I'm Sports Information Director Jeff Weiss, and joined by head football coach Paul Winters. Paul, last year Wayne State went into the year with high expectations, started off great at 6-0, had some injuries, and then really put it together in the playoffs. Yeah, we expected to be a good football team, and um, we actually we, we didn't meet our expectation during the regular season, but we, we had some positives in the playoffs. Hopefully this year as we go into it, we still expect to, to have an outstanding season. We can do it continually. Obviously, a few of the guys from last year's team have gone on uh, with tryouts in the professional ranks. Joe Long with the St. Louis Rams, Jeremy Jones with the Chicago Bears, and Troy Burrell had a little bit of time for the Detroit Lions. So obviously, it says something about the program last year when you have three seniors that get NFL contracts. I think it's great. We have a, um, the program in a position where every year the NFL scouts call and say, hey, we want to come and take a look at X or Y or Z. And um, that's a great thing. So every year it continues. Last year, um, obviously, you were without Nick Thomas at linebacker. He's, Nick is back this year. It looks like the depth on the linebacking crew is just incredible this year. You have, go seven or eight deep. Yeah, I think it is. As you look at our, our program and you rate the top players in our, our, our team, at least four of those guys are linebackers, and we only play three. So, so it's a, a very good position. Um, Nick Thomas, he's the guy now the NFL scouts are coming to take a look at as the middle linebacker. His backup, um, Mo Davenport, um, got a, a lot of playing time last year behind Captain Raleigh Ross and has shown that he's a really good player. And on the outside, we have Ev Everett and Steve O'Shell, who both are, are guys who have a chance to be an all-conference type player. You had one guy kept playing quite a bit last year as a redshirt freshman, Norris Friday, who always seemed to come up with an opportune sack when we needed one. Yeah, Norris is a guy that, that you, see, t you tend to forget about because you have a, a lot of talent there, and he's an impact guy. He comes in and, you know, he's a big, strong kid, and, and he's got an explosive um, burst off the edge. He makes plays for us. In the defensive backfield, obviously losing Jeremy it will be a tough loss. But then you look down this thing and you look at Antoine Robinson had five interceptions last year. Obviously a key pass breakup in the uh, um, win at Minnesota Duluth on the last play of the game. So it's not like the cupboard's bare in the defensive backfield either. Right. Uh, we, we've got some guys that um, started for us at the end of the season and played very well in uh, Jaron Duhart and Aaron Cornett, who started all season. Um, I, I expect outstanding things from them. And then we have some safeties. Like you said, Antoine's a guy who has five interceptions a year. It's unbelievable. Um, but we've got some young guys that we're very, very excited about. Um, at, at corner, Kevin Buford Wilson is a young man who's played a, a lot for us, and he'll be an impact guy for us as a corner. And Zach Balecki is a redshirt freshman who, um, you know, he, he shows up every day, hard worker, talented. Uh, we, we expect him to, to replace, I don't know if you can replace Jeremy Jones, but do a, a, his part mm -hmm. to replace Jeremy. And obviously Maz and Jadu filled in at the end of the year when after Kenny Loney went down, so you do have some experience in the defensive backfield. The defensive line, obviously we lose Chris Pyant and John Robinson as starters, but yet you've got experience with Zach Houghton and Sergio Gurulaki in the middle. Exactly. Those two guys have played a lot of football for us. They'll both be fourth-year seniors. Um, quite a few starts between the two of them. Um, I think one's 300 pounds, the other one's 270 pounds. So we've got some size inside. And on the edge, we've got some young guys. Andrew Matt, who, well, he'll be a junior, but he's an outstanding, outstanding football player who ha we expect great things from this year. And Justice Acuzzi, who's a young man who's going to be a sophomore, he's a very talented, fast, athletic kid coming off the edge. Along with Mike Lominen and, and, and Pat Cecile, you don't want to forget about Pat, who's also a senior who's played inside and outside. And obviously Greg Hassey is another senior uh, who's coming off, had an injury towards the end of last year, but got it going again in the playoffs. I believe he had like three forced fumbles in the Nebraska Kearney game. Yeah, Greg Hassey is a tremendous football player, and, and we'll see how his health goes this, this year and, and how much he's going to contribute. I think one of your coaches that has his work cut out for him this year is Terry Heffernan. Obviously, last year at tackles, he had Joe Long and Will Corey, two you know, five-year veterans that he has to replace. Obviously, he's solid in the middle with Curtis Ferguson and Mike Kinkle at the guards and Tom Box at center. Well, you have actually four guys who started games coming back because um, Sean McCarthy is a young man who did a fantastic job for us replacing 
Mike Hinkle, who replaced Tom Box at center. So Sean McCarthy's played a lot of football for us also. So we'll probably play him at tackle. And we've got a young man um, in Ben Walker who we brought in as a, one of our top recruits a couple years ago. And he's unfortunately for him been behind Joe Long. <laughs> So, um, I, you know, obviously you, Joe Long was a Gene Upshaw award winner um, and is playing in the NFL right now. You don't know how easily you replace him, but we feel very good about Ben. One position that um, a lot of young guys are vying for playing time is tight end. Sean McAuliffe is back as a lone veteran there, but you've had Joe Bernat in the program for a couple of years and quite a few freshmen that you recruited last February. Yeah, it's a position that's very young for us. Um, we have... Three returning players, um, two didn't play, but they were in the program, and Ethan Walsh and Joe Burnett, and, and along with Sean McAuliffe, they're all 254 pounds each. So we're going to be big and physical at the position. And then we signed four young men that, that are going to come in and compete, and, and we like the, the competition. At wide receiver, obviously Troy Burrell had an outstanding senior year going, I believe had over 1,600 receiving yards. How do you kind of replace that guy? Besides, I mean, I know Steve Conway played quite a bit last year, more as a blocking wide receiver. Um, what do you do to spur around those catches that Troy had last year? Well, you don't ask it from one person. Um, you don't, again, you don't replace a Troy Burrell. But we've got James Jackson who came to us last year and did a, did a good job in spurts and will continue to improve. We have Dominique Maybanks who has played a lot of football for us, and I think every other pass was a touchdown last year for a while for him. So he's a talented young man. We also have a, a young man, Michael Johnson, who came into the program this year uh, as a transfer who is going to go and compete with those guys. And Steve Conway, like you mentioned, and um, we've got a couple freshmen that we feel very good about. Obviously, your offense is led by your quarterback, Mickey Mockner. He started 34 straight games for the Warriors. I believe his record is 24-10. and 10. You can't ask anything more than that from a guy that's going to be a graduate student, obviously earning his bachelor's degree in four years. Yeah, we can expect him to go undefeated. How's that? <laughs> or ask him to go undefeated. Um, no, Mickey's done a fantastic job for us, not only with his, his play on the field, but his leadership in the off season. He gets the guys together, gets them working out, and um, has done a fantastic job for us. We expect great things from him. Um, he's lost a little bit of weight, and he's improved his 40 times. So. <laughs> Um, we expect him to maybe not run around too much, but just to be a little bit more athletic at the position and, and give us that leadership. But obviously, death is a key in college football, especially last year when you set an NCAA record playing 16 games. Sean Ganane, Carl Roscoe, Doug Griffin, Nick Muller, you've got a host of players back there that are probably waiting for their chance to play. The competition's awesome. Um, it's fun to watch uh, Doug and and, and Carl is two redshirt freshmen come in and, and compete. And I think Carl's a sophomore, or Doug's a sophomore now, but um, he and Ganane also just, they're, they're all competing. Nick Muller's recovering from an injury, and uh, uh, Nick is a very talented young man too, so we like the position. Um, fullback Chet Privet, who seems a little bit unheralded at times, ended up getting honorable mention All-America accolades from Hanson's Football Gazette a year ago. He's obviously a key uh, person in your running attack, opening up the holes for the tailbacks. Yes, uh, Chet wants the ball a little bit more, <laughs> but um, we'll continue to throw it to him. But uh, he's a tough, hard-nosed guy that really, you know, he kind of gets everybody fired up with the way he plays. So y you have to have guys like Chet who are going to show up every day, they're going to work really hard, they're going to improve, and they're going to push everybody else to be better. Um, speaking of everybody else, tailback, oh my gosh, the depth there. When you think about Desmond Martin and Tony Davis and Jay Hayes and Chris Burks, it goes on and on. You've got five guys that probably want carries. <laughs> uh, at least five. Uh, Jesse Johnson's a young man who, who has been here in the program for a few years, and, and you know he's worked really hard this offseason and, and expects the football. Um, Des Martin, I think the, one of the first times he carried it last year, he went 90 yards for a yeah. touchdown. Um, is a big 210-pound um, stud tailback. Um, Christian Burks is a young man from Detroit who is the fastest of the running backs and, and is a big play guy for us, potentially, as a redshirt freshman. And, and you can't forget about Tony. I mean, Tony was our leading rusher last year. He received some All-American notice. 
and uh, really is a big, physical, tough runner and, and gives us that downhill running threat. Now, in terms of special teams, Stefan Trelacki last year took over the punting duties after just being a place kicker his freshman year, and it seemed to have a solid year, both place kicking and punting for you. Stefan, you know, if you think about what he's done, I, I don't know, did he lead the country in scoring last year? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had so many extra points and, and um, did such a fantastic job for us kicking field goals. Uh, you can't ask for much more, and he's only going to be a junior, so we're very excited about that. And uh, his punting really came on, and we've got to do a better job of protecting him and um, give him the opportunity. I mean, he, he can change the game with his punting. Obviously, in the return game the last four years, you had Josh Rennell. Now, what do you do? <laughs> Another, how do you replace a Josh Rennell on both kickoff and punt returns? <laughs> you just uh, cross your fingers and, and, and hope that you can do it because Josh Rennell was one of the most dynamic football players in the country. And, and again, another guy that's not going to easily be replaced. But uh, James Jackson's a young man who, again, had a good spring as a return man and is faster, uh, considerably faster. So um, I think he had two kickoff returns for touchdowns last year. Um, now he'll probably take over the punting duty as well. And Dominique Maybanks is another guy who's going to compete for that position. Obviously, continuity on the coaching staff is important, and this year you only have one new full-time assistant coach, Brad Wilson, came in from Ashland, so that obviously should be a good thing for the Warriors as well. Yeah, we're very excited about our staff. Um, everybody's back on offense, and um, having Brad on defense, I think, um, kind of creates a spark. You know, He wasn't a part of all the, the big things that happened, and it's important to him to be a part of that, and so he's going to drive those guys to, to be better and and drive the defense to be better and, and, and help us to continue our winning ways. All right, sounds great, Coach. Thank you very much for your time. This wraps up this edition of Warrior Football.